It's time for What's Burning with Kevin KB Burns, presented by Bill Lacasse and SRG Financial Advisors. But first, please join us as we honor our great nation with the playing of our national anthem. And now your host, Kevin K.B. Burns. Hey, welcome into What's Burning right here on Lake TV. K.B. with you for yet another great show that is going to run the gamut of topics and information. You'll feel uh, so much smarter when you're done watching the show. Of course, I want to thank all of our great sponsors, SRG Financial Advisors, our veterinary at the lake, Budget Blinds, Ozark Barge and Dock, and Bryant Auction. On the program coming up, we'll talk with Shana Avishan from Share the Harvest Food Pantry. They've got a great program for you, and uh, maybe you need a little rental assistance. They can help you out. Plus, our series on responsible gun ownership with Tom Abbott from Iron Eagle Tactical continues. Bill Mulder and I go out to the Camden County Museum on On the Trail and we'll wrap it all up with our furry friend Wiggum. He needs a home. He's a good looking puppy dog out there at Ozark's Cat and Canine. It's all coming up right here on What's Burning on Lake TV. Looking for blinds, shades, shutters, drapes, or bedroom makeovers? On a budget? You need Budget Blinds and Laurie. Bring your ideas to us or let our design consultants help you create the perfect look for your home. Because Budget Blinds is nationwide, our collective buying power enables us to search many major brands to bring you the blinds, shades, shutters, and drapes you want for less. Budget Blinds. Call us for a free consultation. Budget Blinds. The best in custom blinds and window coverings. What is COMC? A health center where everyone has access to high-quality, affordable medical, dental, and behavioral health care, regardless of insurance or ability to pay. Offering primary care, preventative, chronic, pediatrics, and OBGYN. COMC even offers comprehensive dental and same-day emergency care. A health center that focuses on every aspect of your health. Everything your family needs to stay healthy. At COMC, your health is our mission. Join Lake TV for a cup of coffee with Will and Chris, the Lake Area's only local TV talk show focused on the Lake Area. Local stories, local sports, and local events. Have a cup of coffee with Will and Chris weekdays at 8, 1, and 8 on Lake TV. You want a dock that will withstand the wake from a million boats? Want a dock that's different from the usual dock? Then you want Ozark Barge and Dock in Gravoy Mills. Ozark Barge and Dock, now celebrating 33 years of building the best dock on Lake of the Ozarks. And we guarantee every dock we build. So when it comes time to build your custom dock, trust the best and go with Ozark Barge and Dock, building the best dock at the lake for the last 33 years. A move to your dream home should be exciting, not a hassle. That's why you go with the experts at Sunrise Movers, where we do the hard work for you. Your furry friends are more than pets, they're family. And at Our Veterinary, we understand that. With multiple locations, we can service your pets when and where you need it. Our team of professionals offers routine wellness, orthopedic care from broken bones to joint repair, and even emergency services. We are ready to welcome your pet to our family with medical or preventative care. With multiple convenient locations, our veterinary is the team providing exceptional care for your pet when and where you need it.
Hey, welcome back to What's Burning here on Lake TV, KB, and uh, just a quick reminder to catch some of our other programming. For example, Cup of Coffee with the Will Holtz and Chris Schneider. You can see it every day at 8 a.m., 1 p.m., and 8 p.m., and they do a great job of tackling local issues, so make sure you check it out. Sitting to my left, the lovely and talented Shane Abishan. She is with the Share the Harvest Food Pantry and Thrift Store that they have on location just down the road from us. How you been? I'm doing great. It's great to see you. I appreciate nice you taking you. time. Thank you. Uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about a program that the uh, uh, food pantry is in the process of utilizing to help folks out who might be uh, a little uh, shy on uh, on rent, and mm -hmm. uh, it is a great program. Uh, we'll certainly talk about that. But I wanted to kind of put things in perspective, Shana, for this time of year, as far as what is going on with a lot of the food pantries. Now, we know uh, in the winter months, things can get a little sparse. But add to that what we've been going through with things like inflation. And I wonder, does that really compound the problem for you folks? Um, it does. We have noticed a little bit of a decrease in the foods we're receiving from our food bank out of Columbia, Missouri, the mm -hmm. Central and Northeast Food Bank Systems. Uh, we saw a slight uh, decrease in availability of foods. They do their best working with Feeding America mm -hmm. uh, to keep their warehouse stocked so they can supply uh, over 32 pantries just here in mid-Missouri. Right. Um, so we have seen a small decrease, but we've also seen an increase in foods that we get from our local vendors. Right. So that kind of right. helps offset that a little bit. And you know, I, this is something I didn't realize is you do get a lot of local assistance. And uh, let's talk about some of those folks. Who are they? Uh, well, we, we pick up foods three days a week from Gerbs, Walmart, Deerberg's, and Woods. Mm. Uh, so these are foods that uh, may be at or near their best buy, mm -hmm. uh, what they consider a best buy. Um, we've gotten some stuff though that's d dated out for six months. It mm -hmm. just depends on when the food vendors decide to take something off the shelf. So sure. we get a lot of food from our vendors uh, throughout the year. In fact, in 2021, um, we received um, from our food um, vendors, our local stores, uh, approximately 331,000 pounds of food. Wow. Yeah. And that, uh, that goes to uh, families all over the area. Mm -hmm. How many food pantries are we talking about in this general area of the Lake of the Ozarks? Miller, Morgan, uh, Camden, maybe Benton counties? There is, um, there is approximately six major food banks here. That's mm -hmm. Food for Morgan County, the Eldon Community Food Pantry. We have Hope House. Uh, Share the Harvest. There's a smaller pantry out in Climax Spring called the Alliance. Right. Of course, the Lamb House does assistance. And then what we've noticed recently in the last two years, I think because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, was some of our local churches have put together pantries at their locations right. uh, for community outreach to help those in need. Kind of back to the, the vendor aspect of things, do you get a lot of help from local restaurants? Or are they participating at all? We do get help from um, our local restaurants. When they, normally that comes around about October, November, mm -hmm. when they're getting ready to shut down for the winter. Mm -hmm. um, they'll clean out their freezers and donate pizzas and chicken wings and things of that nature. So Party. we do, yeah. And we, <laughs> we provide them with a letter of their uh, donation so they can, they can uh, maybe uh, apply for a tax credit. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Do you have any idea in terms of the amount or the number of people that are served by these uh, various, and I mean, if you want to just talk directly here in the Lake area or mm -hmm. throughout central Missouri, I mean, uh, are, are, are the numbers pretty substantial? The numbers are substantial. Um, and what we find in the wintertime being where we're at, being in a community that has a lot of seasonal jobs, mm -hmm. um, we see an increase. So a lot of businesses shut down and slow down for the winter, uh, maybe take, take a little hibernation nap. We don't. No. That's our busy time of the year. So we see people um, uh, increase in numbers this time of year. Now we do talk a lot and focus a lot on the aspect of food, but there are other uh, means of assistance that uh, you can provide to folks, in particular, what we wanted to talk about today. Yeah, we do a uh, financial emergency aid. So we help people who need help. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's some unfortunate circumstances that come about and you're shy on paying your rent, mm -hmm. paying your electric bill. Maybe you've had an illness that's, that you've had to experience maybe some unexpected medical costs. Um, and we're here to help. So we have not only through Share the Harvest, we have an emergency financial aid program, but it, we're also a Salvation Army Extension Office. So I'm able to help with Salvation 
Salvation Army uh, financial aid also. Mm -hmm. um, the program that we're launching, uh, which will be available starting February 1st, but I'm taking applications now, is a rental assistance program, um, $250 per family uh, in Camden County. Uh, this was a grant that I received through Camden County mm -hmm. uh, through the ARPA funds, which the ARPA is the American uh, Rescue Plan yes. Act that was uh, passed. So um, they contacted me and said, hey, we have funds left over. Do you have a program you can put together to help our citizens? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I got together with my board and we came up with a financial assistance program that we thought would work. Uh, we always give financial assistance, um, but not in, in this monetary value. Right. So, Are there qualifications to receive the money? What, what do folks need to be able well, they, to understand before they come in? Yep, we just have a one page, uh, a little short um, assessment form. Mm -hmm. um, payments will be paid directly to the leaseholder, landowner, uh, mortgage company, things of that nature. Right. So um, be sure to be prepared to provide uh, me with some sort of rental agreement, mm -hmm. lease agreement, something of that nature. And that's basically just to make sure the money gets to where it's supposed to go. That's correct. Sometimes things might get off the trail a little bit. You don't want that to happen. Right. This rental assistance is uh, necessary to, uh, obviously, uh, a lot of folks in and around the area that uh, might be having a bit of a struggle getting all of that uh, taken care of. So they can come in uh, during uh, during what time of the day? or um, They can come in Monday through Friday. Uh, generally, we're open 10 to 4. Mm -hmm. uh, they can call me. I can mail out an assessment for them if they'd like me to mail one to them, and then they bring it back to me. What is that number? Um, they can call me at 573-873-5855. Well, um, or come by our location, check right, us out. Right, absolutely. If they've never been around. to our location, come see our thrift store. It's a very and, nice place. Yep. How did the garden end up this year? I was kind of curious about that. We had done a, a feature with uh, yep. uh, the garden on the grounds, which kind of helps ease the, the cost and, uh, and allows people to get fresh produce. Right. Um, our garden is something that we're really proud of. If you haven't been to our facility, come check it out. Our uh, garden associate is just getting ready to start planting. Outstanding. Um, so come see us. We did about 5,000. We grew about 5,000 pounds of uh, fresh vegetables last year. That's awesome. So, so great. So wonderful. Yep. Thrift store and thrift store hours? Um, our thrift store hours are Monday through Saturday, 10 to 4, and then on Tuesdays, 10 to 7. And then we do food distribution three days a week, 1 to 7 on Tuesdays. That allows people who work maybe mm -hmm. to come and, and get some groceries. Sure. Um, and then Wednesdays and Thursdays, 10 to 4. How about people that uh, would like to volunteer their time? Because I know you're always looking for volunteers. Yeah, that's probably one of the areas that we've been heavily um, hit mm -hmm. is volunteers. Uh, volunteers tend to be retired, semi-retired. Sure. Um, a lot of those took a break during the pandemic. Right. So we're mm -hmm. looking for volunteers. We have some slots that need to be filled to help our operations run smoothly. And they can stop by and visit with Shane to become a volunteer. Yep. Shane Abishan with the uh, Share the Harvest Food Pantry and Thrift Store. Thank you so much oh, as always. Thanks for having great me. Great to see we you. We appreciate our partnerships with Lake TV. Absolutely. And continue uh, the great work. Thank we'll you. take a break. Back with more coming up right here on Lake TV. Looking for blinds, shades, shutters, drapes, or bedroom makeovers? On a budget? You need Budget Blinds & Laurie. Bring your ideas to us, or let our design consultants help you create the perfect look for your home. Because Budget Blinds is nationwide, our collective buying power enables us to search many major brands to bring you the blinds, shades, shutters, and drapes you want for less. Budget Blinds. Call us for a free consultation. Budget Blinds. The best in custom blinds and window coverings. At SRG Financial, we reduce the uncertainty on your journey to financial independence. Our foundational approach revolves around two things, what matters most to our clients and the things that we can control. The things that matter most often revolve around family, occupation, and recreation. The things we can control are a panoramic approach to financial planning, a strategy that stays fluid and dynamic like your life, and a proprietary process, the mile marker formula. If you want to reduce the uncertainty on your journey, contact us today. There's a new radio station at the lake, a radio station that's geared towards the community, a radio station where you can have a hand in what we do. Welcome to Key Radio, a community-based radio station that invites you to be a part of the solution. We encourage you to become a content creator. That's right, you provide the content. Listen in at 89.3 or online at keyradio.live. To find out more about becoming a content creator, call 573-280-0532. 
Hey Jess. Yeah, Nicole, what do you need? Did you see that new listing in Sunrise Beach? Yeah, it was just listed two minutes ago. It has 150 feet of lakefront. And a brand new kitchen. I'm headed out there after I type this email. I'm on the phone with my clients. Hey, where are you going? I already put an offer in, cash above list, and it's looking good. Are you kidding me? Hey everyone, Daryl Cunningham with Slumberland Furniture at the Lake. We have two big events happening this week. We have a polar vortex coming down. It's going to be cold, 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 and the Chiefs are playing the Bills. All right, so come see us, get into some comfortable furniture, watch the game, and be warm. Come see us at Slumberland Furniture at the Lake, where we're bringing happy home. Your furry friends are more than pets, they're family. And at Our Veterinary, we understand that. With multiple locations, we can service your pets when and where you need it. Our team of professionals offers routine wellness, orthopedic care from broken bones to joint repair, and even emergency services. We are ready to welcome your pet to our family with medical or preventative care. With multiple convenient locations, Our Veterinary is the team providing exceptional care for your pet when and where you need it. Hey, back here with Tom Abbott, Iron Eagle Tactical, KB from What's Burning on Lake TV. And, uh, you know, we're enjoying a great series on responsible gun ownership. And why is it a great series? Because we're offering you a lot of alternatives. Now, if we basically uh, talk about what we've talked about, safety, storage, various types of firearms, ammunition, we've talked a little bit about CCW, uh, it's all good, but we, uh, we really ask you to continue your training, continue your education. You know, what we talk about here isn't the end all do all. It is uh, just kind of introducing you to some things that you need to continue on as far as training. So Tom and I are going to take uh, some time here, kind of sit down a little bit, go over, uh, you know, uh, what happens when somebody breaks in your home? What are some of the things that you need to keep in mind? Can you always shoot someone? Is it uh, a good idea to consider uh, a number of other things like uh, some of the laws and legislation? legislation that's in place already, Castle Doctrine, Stand Your Ground, all of these things because they play an intricate role in what it is that uh, you may be faced with, how you react, and the outcome of that particular situation. Because even though someone's in your home or maybe on your property, doesn't necessarily always mean that you can shoot them. And uh, that's something that you have to consider and what you'll learn more about with your uh, conceal and carry training. Right, and thank you, KB. The, the training portion of it is important. We've covered the concealed carry stuff. And again, as I've said, whether you want your concealed carry permit or not, some people are afraid to register with the state or pay the 40 bucks or whatever it is at, at the county level <clears throat> to get your concealed carry card. The training is val invaluable. Right. You have to have the training to know what, to, what you can do, what you can't do, and especially when it comes to home protection. Um, you know, when you're out and about and you've got a, a weapon on you or a gun on you, you're responsible for that. You're, you're responsible for all of the damage that happens beyond whatever it is that you're going to shoot right. at. Uh, you're, you have the ability to, to protect yourself. You never give up that right to protect yourself. But it varies whenever someone enters your home or as Missouri would refer to it as the castle doctrine. And, and there is a difference between the Castle Doctrine and Stand Your Ground. Missouri didn't become a Stand Your Ground state until I think 2017, 2018, but we've always been a Castle Doctrine state for the most part in modern times. And the, the consider the castle as your home, your RV, your boat, uh, your car, you know, anything that you have the reasonable expectation of safety, privacy, um, you know, even to a certain extent, tents, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, anywhere you lay your head or 
they say you have a reasonable expectation of safety and privacy um, is covered under the castle doctrine. So basically what that means, if someone enters your home uninvited and is a threat to you, legally, technically, you have the ability and you're within your rights to shoot them. I'm not an advocate of that. You never want to shoot anybody that you don't have to if your life's not threatened because there's been situations where people will break into some people's house they're drunk and they fall asleep on the couch you come home at two o'clock in the morning um just because the guy's laying on your couch doesn't mean you can go get your gun and shoot it right you know or your daughter's boyfriend sneaking in the back window you don't necessarily want to shoot him either you don't want him there at two o'clock in the morning but you don't want to you don't want to shoot him even though if you're legally allowed to we'll save that for the cleaning portion <laughs> Of the firearm, uh, so of the firearm series. You know, we joke about it, or we laugh about it, but you know, the idea of you know, if you shoot them on the front yard, you know, shoot them on the front porch, drag them inside, mm -hmm. you don't want to do that either. Right. You know, that's tampering with evidence, and you always want to be honest and upfront with law enforcement. You don't want to say anything more than you absolutely have to, because literally under those stressful situations you're not going to remember distances you're not going to remember numbers you're not going to remember colors it's all a fog mm -hmm. and so you don't want to say well i shot the guy five times you know or i shot five times and then they go look at your gun there's you shot eight times all right well then you're a liar you know i mean and a, and a, a prosecuting attorney is going to look at it that mm -hmm. way you know so we want to avoid going to court we want to avoid avoid going to jail but we do want to cover a little bit about the castle doctrine and the stand your ground laws the castle doctrine again has to do with your house your domicile uh, it's been used in situations where uh, you know one of the things that we talk about or it's been uh, in the news in several years past, especially with the riots in Ferguson and, and some of the riots that have been going on is protesters in the road or they're surrounding your vehicle and what do I do? The legal stance on that, as long as you're inside your vehicle and they don't have access to you, you can't shoot them. If they break your window, all bets are off. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Or if they've got a gun aimed at you, all bets are off. You know, that's kind of the defining line. As long as you're protected right. by that window, you know, or they haven't opened your door, they don't have the ability to hurt you. They can yell at you, scream at you, spit at you, call you all kinds of names, but they don't have the ability to cause bodily injury or bodily harm to mm -hmm. you. Once they break that window, you know, then all bets are off, and right. you have the ability to protect yourself at that point. Uh, carjackings, you really can't use your gun to protect property. You know, if they're ransacking your car, uh, but they're not threatening you. That's not a situation where you can shoot them. If they yank you out of your car, they're not armed, and they take off in the opposite direction of your car, you can't shoot at your own car. I mean, people want to. Trust me, I've been in these situations. You want to, but you have to stop yourself. Mm -hmm. You can't just shoot at somebody because they stole your car. Sounds to me like you really have to have your emotions in check. You do. And again, what we've talked about constantly, through the education, through the safety, through the training, you will learn to prepare yourself for certain situations. Hopefully you're never in that situation, but if you are, you'll have a better understanding of what to do. I've been in classes and people ask me, I've got I've got trespassers that continuously cross my property or drug tweakers or meth heads or whatever, mm -hmm. and they're constantly crossing my property. Can I shoot them? No, you cannot. They're not a threat to your life or your limb or your family. Two things there. Number one, you don't want to shoot them. And number two, you don't want to brandish a firearm, nope. show it to them, threaten them with it, because all that's going to do is uh, is cause a situation that more than likely it could be avoided. No warning shots. Yeah. Can't fire warning shots. That's another you know thing that I get. Like, well, I'm just going to shoot over their head. I'm not shooting at them. I don't care. You fired a firearm in the direction of another human being, you're the one that's going to go to jail. So we talked a little bit about uh, the castle doctrine mm -hmm. and uh, any place where you essentially lay your head so let's talk a little bit more about stand your ground because they're very different when it comes right down to it they are um, as I mentioned Missouri's only been a castle doctrine state for the last four or five years and we heard a lot about the stand your ground law from the case in Florida um, where somebody got shot died and they used the stand your ground defense to make it a self-defense case. 
and, and it was. There's a lot of legalities in that particular case that you know could be argued, but basically, from Missouri's perspective, on stand your ground is states that do not have a stand your ground law. You have the duty to retreat. Say we're in a confrontation, um, and I'm armed and you're not. Um, you, but there's a physical size difference between the two of us. Um, or in a situation where it's three on one, or it's given some leeway of male versus female uh, from a strength and size perspective. Mm -hmm. A non-standard ground state, you would have to try to retreat. You would have to try to run away. Even in your own home that doesn't have a castle doctrine or a standard ground law, you're required to, and I'm not going to tell you what those states are, but you could probably guess where some of those states mm -hmm. are. You have the requirement to retreat inside your own house to a safe place, call 911, and as a last resort, hiding in your closet, protecting your kids, are then only then are you allowed to shoot someone that's in your house. So Missouri, as we go in the other direction, even out on the sidewalk in a confrontation, you don't have to retreat. You can stand your ground to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't be the aggressor. You can't, uh, and in some cases, you could be the instigator. You know, like we could get into a a tussle, a, you know, a hand-to-hand -hand combination, but the first time you pull out a knife and I pull out a gun, that changes the situation, right. you know? So things progress as they go along. So the stand your ground is, you know, if you've got a knife and I've got a gun, I don't have to retreat. If you pull a knife and in a non-stand your ground state, I need to try to get away from you as much as possible. So Missouri has, you know, we're on the forefront of Second Amendment protection. You know, we have the Second Amendment Preservation Act. We have the standard ground laws. We have the Castle Doctrines. The state of Missouri gives the st residents of Missouri all of the ability to make their own decisions, to stand your ground, to protect yourself and your family mm -hmm. and others. You know, that can, you know, if you see somebody that's trying to kill somebody else, you have the ability to stop that as well. Um, you just can't do it to protect property. Um, arson becomes an issue. Arson in the case of only an occupied dwelling, you know, if somebody's burning down your garage with your hundred thousand dollar sixty nine Camaro in it, you can't shoot them. Mm -hmm. You want to, yeah. trust me, you would want to. But if you know grandma lives above the garage, and grandma's home, and that car and that perpetrator setting fire to the garage, that changes it. Then right. you have the ability to defend grandma's mm -hmm. life at that point. So those are things that you learn, the legalities that you learn in a concealed carry class or a uh, Missouri gun laws class that whether you go get the concealed carry permit or not, I just urge people to go get the training so you know what you can do and what you can't do. That's right. And more than likely, if something does happen and the police show up, which they more mm -hmm. than likely will, uh, does everybody get handcuffed? How do they, uh, how do they handle that situation? Uh, in, a, in a situation like in our, our training classes, we call, we talk about, um, always be the first one to call for law enforcement or not call 911 because you're either a witness, a victim or a suspect, depending on what order you make the call in. Right. Somebody may be harassing you. Somebody may have pointed a gun at you and you pull your gun and shoot them. They're not dead. They call 911 and report that you shot them. Mm -hmm. All right. So all of a sudden you didn't call, he called, they called. Um, so you're either a, wit a witness, a victim, or the perpetrator. So always call 911 and let them know what happened. Again, don't give a lot of specific details. It's like there's been a shooting. Um, I'm wearing this. I do have a weapon on me and they'll tell you what to do. Whenever law, law enforcement rolls up, they'll tell you, you know, drop the gun, hands up, down on the ground, comply with all of that exactly. stuff until they figure it out because they don't know, they weren't there. So they'll get eyewitness testimony. So really follow what they have to say, don't argue, um, but don't give a lot of details because your lawyer will tell you not to give details. And they'll most likely, if you shot somebody, you're gonna get handcuffed until they figure it out. And you're probably gonna end up going to court for one reason or another, there's a good possibility there. So yeah, you want to kind of minimize the details. And you even said once someone fires 
the firearm at someone that they consider to be a threat, mm -hmm. you lose track of a lot of the things that uh, are going on around you, colors, Shh. numbers, you name it. Sure, because then that person's calling 911 and mm -hmm. saying, hey, some idiot's on their back porch shooting at me and you know, my cat ran across here. I'm just going after my cat. Mm -hmm. You don't know the situation. You sure don't. And uh, well, again, that just reiterates the need for us to continue to urge folks to educate and train, go through the motions, go through the process, have a plan in place. My goodness, have a plan in place. And all of these training materials, you can utilize those, find the right holster, everything you need to do, but do it in advance and don't wait until the situation arises and then you have to react. Tom Abbott, KB, we're here with the Iron Eagle Tactical in the gun shop with What's Burning on Lake TV. Enjoying What's Burning with KB right here on Lake TV? Have questions, comments, or suggestions? Have an interesting story for KB to tell? Or maybe you want to be interviewed by KB on the show or interested in sponsoring? All you have to do is reach out to KB at kbandmylaketv.com. Most people don't know which direction they're heading when it comes to retirement. Whether they're still on the journey or already there, at SRG Financial, we have a process, the mile marker formula, that helps you pursue your work optional lifestyle so you can focus on what's most important to you like your family, are checking off those bucket list items. Start taking the first step toward finding your work-optional lifestyle. Call us today at 573-302-7212. Want to get to know local leaders a lot better? Join Lake TV for a new Community Spotlight show weekdays at 9, 3, and 7. We talk with local leaders to get their story and learn more about their organizations. It's the Community Spotlight show on Lake TV. Looking for blinds, shades, shutters, drapes, or bedroom makeovers? On a budget? You need Budget Blinds and Laurie. Bring your ideas to us or let our design consultants help you create the perfect look for your home. Because Budget Blinds is nationwide, our collective buying power enables us to search many major brands to bring you the blinds, shades, shutters, and drapes you want for less. Budget Blinds. Call us for a free consultation. Budget Blinds. The best in custom blinds and window coverings. Want a dock that will withstand the wake from a million boats? Want a dock that's different from the usual dock? Then you want Ozark Barge and Dock in Gravois Mills. Ozark Barge and Dock, now celebrating 33 years of building the best dock on Lake of the Ozarks. And we guarantee every dock we build. So when it comes time to build your custom dock, trust the best and go with Ozark Barge and Dock, building the best dock at the lake for the last 33 years. Hey, it's What's Burning on Lake TV. KB here along with Mr. Historian. Bill Mulder and our series On the Trail continues at I think one of the most iconic places in Camden County and that is the Camden County Museum. It's right behind us. So uh, we're going to take a little time today, jump in there, hang out, look at a few things and uh, actually I think we're probably going to make this a two-parter because there's a lot of stuff there in there to see. There is a whole lot of stuff in here to yeah. cover and not only that, just the building itself is iconic. Right, so if sure you is. don't know about what this building is, we're going to tell you. Well, uh, fill us in. Well, this is the Lynn Creek version three. Okay. This is the third and final Lynn Creek. Right. As it come up after being flooded. And in 1929 is when they started building new Lynn Creek or this version of it, because they didn't want to give up. Of course, just to your left is Camdenton right up the hill here. Sure. Uh, so they moved up here. They thought this will be far enough up that it won't get flooded. Well, <sighs> It still does once in a while. The little <laughs> little stream right over here, Lynn mm -hmm. Creek, does do some damage once in a while. But they said, let's start building stuff. One of the first buildings they built was the Lynn Creek School. Okay. Because guess what? Camdenton didn't have a school. There was nothing up there on that hill. So they built this in 1929. This was the K through 12. Mm -hmm. There's some really interesting architecture. The gym in here is one of my favorite places. We're going to look, be taking a look at that a little bit later. Right on. But this is one of the first things they built. Now, why was getting the school established so important? Education, of course, is always the main thing. But this was the heart of the community. This is where everybody came to have fun mm -hmm. together for box suppers or parent-teacher association, PTA. This is like the community center. This is it right here. And they built a very fine building for mm -hmm. its time. Sure. And just so much 
that they even carved the name up there in concrete on that beautiful cornice right behind us. So it's, it's a lot of work. Now, things were a lot different because right behind the building here today is Highway 54. Sure. Back in the day, the road right over here was Highway V that went right down the road here to 54, mm -hmm. like it used to exist, that runs just across the river or across the creek over here. So it was a whole different layout. And today, you, if you didn't know what you were looking at, it wouldn't make sense to you. I would say, you know, anytime I come to Lynn Creek, before I go where I'm supposed to go, I always take a little little drive around town to see what's new and exciting. And you find yourself kind of being a big fish in a little pond because as soon as somebody spots a vehicle they don't know, they're on the phone. They are. Keep an eye on that, that white Jeep Grand Cherokee yeah. well, and we, see what they're doing. And just as we were laughing with Daphne a while ago, the director of the museum, we need the party lines back where people can just pick up the phone, they'll hear it, and they'll go, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's sure a enough. white Jeep running around down there, and it's that guy that don't know how to dress for cold weather. Well, as you notice, Bill's got on a coat, another coat, gloves. I've got on uh, shorts, uh, short sleeve shirt, and uh, pretty much like I always dress. Well, and Megan's got on a coat. Everybody in there has got on a coat, uh -huh. so what the heck? I guess. Uh, <laughs> it is, <clears throat> just so you know, uh, the high today was supposed to be 22 degrees, and we'll get into single digits tonight. You want to take a, a tour of the museum? You know what? We need to go inside and look around in here. Let's do it. All right. All right. So we're inside the Camden County Museum, which is actually the Lynn Creek School the for Lynn grades Creek School. K yep. through 12. Yep. And we are in the gymnasium, and you can see by kind of looking around, you've got the stage. You got a lot of books and, and records and stuff. That's for their event that's coming up this weekend. But we've got uh, you know right. We're right here at Center Court. We are. Jump. Want to do like a jump ball real yeah, quick? This, Anybody let's got do a it. basketball? <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about this room. This was the gym. Right. Now, as you look around, you probably think of today's gyms, which are quite a bit bigger. Sure. But this is it. And then Megan, I'm sure, is going to have some, some film here. You're going to be able to see how close the out-of-bounds line is to those brick walls. Uh, going out-of-bounds in this building could very, very seriously lead to a concussion. Yes, it could. <laughs> so there really was no room for the crowds to set right, right on courtside. Mm -hmm. So where did they sit? Well, if you look at the railings up here, and this is all original, the crowd sit up above the court and on the stage. The team sit up on the stage as well. And then there was probably bleachers and risers up on the stage. It is that Coliseum kind of a feel. It is a, <laughs> yes, it is. And Daphne was telling us earlier that this could hold around 300 people. Doesn't look like it, but maybe standing room only. Yeah, I mean, it's that's a lot of people, but you know, if you're going to get cozy, I guess you could fit. You know, this room has got so much in it in, 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 in the gymnasium, in the fact that it was just a gymnasium itself. But as we look around, we see all kinds of different things. We've got, uh, I guess, is that the former uh, Camden County Courthouse set up there? That is the Camden County Courthouse that come out of the old, what is now the new administration building. Right. But that was the big courtroom, as they called it. In other words, circuit court. Okay. And it's, it's gorgeous. That's some of the best whatever. And they were able to preserve the backdrop, the judge's bench, uh, some of the, the seating, and then the bench that would have been around the front of the courtroom. Sure. You've got some uh, pianos in here. Looks like maybe a setup to what might have been a pipe organ at one particular point. And then various pictures and all kinds of history all around us, above us. This is a fun place. And if you've never, yeah. ever come to the uh, Camden County Museum, you're really missing out. This is a true hidden gem. A lot of people, you know, talk about it, but really to be able to enjoy it and thoroughly enjoy it, you got to get in here and maybe make it a two or three day event. Now, and if you're not from here, yeah. and you're, we hope you're listening to us today, you know how much it's going to cost you to walk in this building? I think uh, not a whole lot. Not one thin dime. Yeah. This is a freebie. You can come down here. Now, they will happily accept donations. And I would encourage, if you sure. come here and visit this, offer to give a donation. If you live here, you know what the best donation you give is? Your time. Your time, and sure. Be a volunteer. volunteer. Daphne will sign you up immediately mm -hmm. if you walk in and talk to her. And they could use the help. There's a lot of programs they do that are super nice programs. Get involved in your community if you live here. This is something you can do for fun. History is fun. Collecting is fun. 
And besides, you get to be around all this stuff all day long if yeah. you're down here working. And really learn about uh, the history of the area, which is something that, since I've lived here, I've always wanted to do. I've been here numerous times. I love coming to the Camden County Museum. I know a lot of people that do. They've got uh, their dinner that they have around Dogwood Festival time. Mm -hmm. They've got programs that uh, you, do, you host with the kids and uh, various events, kind of like what we see, these tables full of books and records. So uh, they do a lot to uh, draw people in. And as you said, it doesn't cost a dime. So leave a little something in the way of a donation. Walking around this beautiful facility, taking in all the history of Camden County, we came to one of the places that, uh, well, I uh, would have to say was a huge draw, and that was the J Bar H Rodeo, which Bill Mulder, we're looking in these cases and we're looking at some of the various programs, the souvenir programs yeah. that they had. Who was here over the years? Clint Eastwood, Rowdy Yates, um, uh, the, the guys from uh, Gunsmoke. We have the guys from Bonanza, Fess Parker, who played uh, Daniel Boone. Boone. Yeah, it, It's just an amazing array. And then you see some of these great pictures here. I mean, pictures of, of, of cars upon cars upon cars and the size of the actual rodeo itself, the, the place where they did the bucking and bronking and all that good stuff. But now me personally, I'll tell you, the rodeo is great and everything, but to have the chance to look at all those cool cars, you that's probably where I would have been. You'd have been in hog heaven. <laughs> uh, to give you an idea how big a deal this was, right. you have big rodeos, you have the Pendleton Roundup, Cheyenne Frontier Days, but J Bar H was the biggest outdoor rodeo in the nation Hot during dog. its run. Camdenton would completely fill up. And if we were looking, you know, you see this parking area here. Right. That's just the grounds. They were parked all the way up through town. They were parked south of town. There was no place to park in Camdenton at the sure. height of this thing. Sure. There was no motel rooms to be had at the lake during the, the rodeo. Right. It was, it was really a big deal. Again, biggest in the nation. This is where you came to get your bona fides if you were a cowboy. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's, there, you need, to, folks, you need to come down here and see this because yeah. you're going to see legends <laughs> here. Uh, the stars that would come here, the, the whole cast of Bonanza sure. was here at one time. So this was a big deal. And uh, people have probably heard of Reba McIntyre. Mm -hmm. One of the first times she sang professionally was here at the J Bar H Rodeo. Wow. But before she went out to sing, she was a barrel racer. So she raced her horse <laughs> and then sang. Go figure. Yeah. So it's I mean this was this is where you if you were gonna make it, you come to the J Bar H Rodeo. This was the place to be. So in 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 conjunction with where we are now and where this facility is, if you were traveling down South Business, what is now South Business 5? South Business 5, right across from the middle school. Mm -hmm. If you're local, you know where the library is. That was the J Bar H Rodeo Grounds. That's amazing. And if you go there today, uh, you'll see an area behind the, the library that's more gravelly. That's where the community garden is. That's where the arena set. Wow. So it's, it's still there in that extent. Uh, is, is, there's no remnants. Well, I shouldn't say that. There is one remnant. You know what that is? I don't. Sandy Nelson. Her parents own J Bar H, and she lives in that area still. Well, there you go. And I, uh, Sandy's a good friend. I love going and talking to her and Sally. Good people. And, you know, I give you three guesses what we talk a lot about when I'm there. <laughs> Probably horses. <laughs> horses and the J Bar H Rodeo. Yeah. Well, you know, you talk about a lot of the big stars. And one of the posters that's prominent when you first walk up is the cast of uh, the Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah. You've got Irene Ryan, Donna Douglas, Max Bayer, Granny, Ellie Mae, and Jethro. And for those of you who are fans of the Hillbilly Fair over in the LaLaurie area, Donna Douglas made a few appearances over there from time to time. But you talk about the big names in terms of star power, then of course you've got all of the biggest names in the sport yes, coming sir. to uh, Camdenton, Missouri yeah. to participate. Denny Lewin, one of the biggest, uh, bronc rider, so he's just a phenomenal cowboy, was here. Yeah. And there's a picture of him down here, and he's on uh, a horse called Jesse James. And if you look at it, you will see that his hat and his head are way up in the air. And as you look at it, you will notice, well, there it looks like a stand. That was the announcer stand. That's right. how high that horse went. The Jesse James horse, I don't know how old he was before he's finally ridden. He was known as a horse that couldn't be rode, and he proved it. 
Well, all four legs are off the ground. Yeah, by quite a bit. <laughs> that, that horse itself, the legs are probably at least three feet off, and then you add another six or uh, eight feet, so the, uh, the rider himself is probably close to uh, uh, 10 feet off the ground, easy. And that rider's thinking, this is gonna hurt when we come down. Exactly. This is gonna jar me a little bit. Absolutely. Okay, so we're wrapping things up here at the Camden County Museum in Lynn Creek, but I gotta tell you folks, we saw so much stuff that we're gonna have to bring Bill Mulder back, another episode of On the Trail here on What's Burning, and uh, we hope that you will take the time to join us. Bill, as always, thank you very much. Great to- My friend, always fun. Always getting a good uh, dose of history here in Camden County at the Camden County Museum in uh, Lynn Creek 3, by the way. So come by and check it out and uh, we're having a blast on What's Burning. Enjoying What's Burning with KB right here on Lake TV? Have questions, comments, or suggestions? Have an interesting story for KB to tell? Or maybe you want to be interviewed by KB on the show or interested in sponsoring? All you have to do is reach out to KB at kbandmylaketv.com. Looking for blinds, shades, shutters, drapes, or bedroom makeovers? On a budget? You need Budget Blinds and Lorry. Bring your ideas to us or let our design consultants help you create the perfect look for your home. Because Budget Blinds is nationwide, our collective buying power enables us to search many major brands to bring you the blinds, shades, shutters, and drapes you want for less. Budget Blinds. Call us for a free consultation. Budget Blinds. The best in custom blinds and window coverings. Most people don't know which direction they're heading when it comes to retirement. Whether they're still on the journey or already there, at SRG Financial, we have a process, the mile marker formula, that helps you pursue your work optional lifestyle so you can focus on what's most important to you, like your family or checking off those bucket list items. Start taking the first step toward finding your work optional lifestyle. Call us today at 573-302-7212. Want a dock that will withstand the wake from a million boats? Want a dock that's different from the usual dock? Then you want Ozark Barge and Dock in Gravoy Mills. Ozark Barge and Dock, now celebrating 33 years of building the best dock on Lake of the Ozarks. And we guarantee every dock we build. So when it comes time to build your custom dock, trust the best and go with Ozark Barge and Dock, building the best dock at the lake for the last 33 years. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, Lake TV's got it all. We think it's hot stuff when things cool down. We spring into action when things start warming up. Of course, summer is one big, huge shootout on Lake TV. And we fall in love all over again when autumn rolls around. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, Lake TV's got it all. Your furry friends are more than pets, they're family. And at Our Veterinary, we understand that. With multiple locations, we can service your pets when and where you need it. Our team of professionals offers routine wellness, orthopedic care from broken bones to joint repair, and even emergency services. We are ready to welcome your pet to our family with medical or preventative care. With multiple convenient locations, Our Veterinary is the team providing exceptional care for your pet when and where you need it. Moving to the lake is a lot of work, but not with Sunrise Movers, where we do the hard work for you. For packing up and delivering to your new home or simply loading and transferring your belongings, Sunrise Movers is the easy choice for your next move. Sunrise Movers packs your possessions extra carefully, shows up on time, and strives for five-star customer service every time. Sunrise Movers, the official movers of Lake TV. Give us a call today to get a free estimate. Sunrise Movers, where we do the hard work for you. Hey, it's KB. We are here at Ozarks Cat and K9. We're just waiting for some cars to drive by. That we're a little loud. We didn't want to drown out the sound of our wonderful voices, myself and Mary Meow Me Tilly. And of course, KB's Furry Friends is presented by the good folks at our veterinary at the lake. Today, we've got a pretty handsome little devil, and his name is uh, Wiggum. Wiggum. Mm -hmm. Do we want to tell him how Wiggum got his name? 
Uh, Wiggum got Wiggum got his name <laughs> because he is, has a happy bladder. Yeah. He's a happy little happy puppy, bladder. and he tends to pee when he gets excited. Yeah. And so I, I named him those. after Ralph Wiggum from The Simpsons, who <laughs> has a tendency to do the same thing. <laughs> happy bladder. <laughs> you know that's that's a good thing to have a happy bladder. Now, uh, Wiggum was a stray. Yes, he was. Yeah. Uh, he was found just outside of Lebanon on the side of the road. Wow. That's something we talked about last time. You know, every once in a while you'll see an animal, but they won't be moving around. Somebody have uh, possibly hit him with a vehicle mm -hmm. or something along those lines. Wiggum was very lucky. And it's interesting because between, you know, here in Lebanon, you'd think that there's probably a shelter somewhere in there. How did he end up here? A lot of times it just has to do with, you know, either the person lives in this area, right. so they're familiar with us, familiar with dogwood, you know, and the ones here, or, you know, maybe they've, if it's, uh, if they're found in another area, maybe they've called that place and they're full and they just mm -hmm. simply don't have room. That's how it is, folks. That's the life these poor dogs lead, especially if, in this particular instance, Wiggum was microchipped, maybe he'd be back with his owners right now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so you folks offer an opportunity of a program to microchip cats and dogs. Yes. And uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, so we have a voucher program that is for vaccines and microchipping. And it makes each of the vaccines, your rabies and your core shot for dogs or cats. And microchipping is each $15 a piece. Mm -hmm. And you can come here to the shelter and pick up a, vac a voucher for any of those three things. And then uh, you would take it up to the vet's there office at Lake Dog and Cat and have that done. Very good, folks. And again, <laughs> we can't tell you how important it is to have your animal spayed and neutered and make sure they get all their shots. And certainly <laughs> microchipping, because I think I've heard at least one or two instances where people have been reunited simply. The animal ends up at a shelter. They check them for a chip. Mm -hmm. They've got a chip. Somebody makes a phone call and the animal and the owners are back together. That's the first thing we do when a stray comes in the door is we grab the microchip reader and check it for a chip. Yeah. And uh, the amount of animals that come in in this area, um, it's not very common that we get one that has a chip in it. Right. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't keep their chips up to date. So, or they never registered it to begin with. Oh no. And so we call the chip company and a lot of times uh, they don't have an owner information on file or the phone number that they have is out of service mm -hmm. and we still can't get a hold of the owner. So that chip is pretty much obsolete at that point. So do you have to update the chip on the animal? And if so, how often? Um, the only reason you would have to update it is you would report to the, uh, the chip company. There's a lot of different chip companies out there mm -hmm. and each one has either you can register on their website or you can call them on the phone to update your information. So the only time you would really need to update something would be if you moved or changed yeah. your phone yeah. number, changed your email address and they needed to know that to be able to get a hold of you. Folks, it's simple stuff. It really is. And uh, you can save the life of your, uh, your pet and make it simple if you're a pet for some reason gets out and i know every once in a while they like to squirt out and take off sometimes they come back mm -hmm. sometimes not so much get a microchip like old wiggum here and what what, what breed of dog is wiggum it's a unique name uh we have him listed as a catahoula and great dane mix catahoula and great dane mix mm -hmm. Catahoula Leopard Dogs uh, is one of the first dog breeds that was originated in the North America. Wow. Uh, it's actually the state, I did a little research before we You <laughs> before sure we did, talked. that's awesome. Uh, it's the state dog of Louisiana. The state dog, the mm -hmm. Catahoula. Yep, they were bred for uh, herding purposes. He is a handsome devil and he's going to make a great addition to somebody's home. So when you come by and you decide you want to adopt Wiggum, go the extra mile and get a microchip so in well, case he does take off you all can... of our animals leave us microchips well That's then that takes care of that problem feet. now doesn't it mm -hmm. thank you mary appreciate <laughs> it as always you guys do a great job out here at ozarks cat and canine again our thanks to our veterinary at the lake for sponsoring the uh, furry friends kb's furry friends right here in what's burning on lake tv
At SRG Financial, we reduce the uncertainty on your journey to financial independence. Our foundational approach revolves around two things, what matters most to our clients and the things that we can control. The things that matter most often revolve around family, occupation, and recreation. The things we can control are a panoramic approach to financial planning, a strategy that stays fluid and dynamic like your life, and a proprietary process, the mile marker formula. If you want to reduce the uncertainty on your journey, contact us today. Your furry friends are more than pets, they're family. And at Our Veterinary, we understand that. With multiple locations, we can service your pets when and where you need it. Our team of professionals offers routine wellness, orthopedic care from broken bones to joint repair, and even emergency services. We are ready to welcome your pet to our family with medical or preventative care. With multiple convenient locations, Our Veterinary is the team providing exceptional care for your pet when and where you need it. It's our most protective wash yet. Introducing the Quick Car Ceramic Wash. It's an industrial grade polymer solution with ceramic nanotechnology, resulting in high end advanced scientific protection of your vehicle's finish. The Quick Car Ceramic Wash. Try it on its own or with the monthly unlimited wash club today. Quick Car. Quick, easy, and professional every time. In Jefferson City and Osage Beach. Want a dock that will withstand the wake from a million boats? Want a dock that's different from the usual dock? Then you want Ozark Barge and Dock in Gravois Mills. Ozark Barge and Dock, now celebrating 33 years of building the best dock on Lake of the Ozarks. And we guarantee every dock we build. So when it comes time to build your custom dock, trust the best and go with Ozark Barge and Dock, building the best dock at the lake for the last 33 years. For 55 years, Bryant Auction has been a trusted and reliable auction company that cares about their clients. Whether it's real estate, guns, or an estate sale, Bryant Auction in Osage Beach gets results. Call 573-346-4777 or go to bryantauction.com with auctions every Thursday at 5. I'm always here. And don't tell my wife, but I have more fun here than I do at home. Bryant Auction. Consider it sold. Hey, just a quick reminder, if you've got something going on, something you'd like to see on the show, an idea for a topic, reach out to me directly, kb at mylaketv.com. We'd love to find out more about what's going on around the lake, and the only way we can do that is with your help. Hey, thanks to all of the great sponsors, SRG Financial Advisors, Ozark Barge and Dock, Budget Blinds, our veterinary at the lake, and yes, of course, Bryant Auction. Next week, we're back at the Camden County Museum with Bill Mulder on the trail. What a cool place the Camden County Museum is, and I highly recommend that you check it out. We'll continue on with our uh, Responsible Gun Ownership Series, Tom Abbott from Iron Eagle Tactical. We'll take some time to check in, get some financial news from Bill LaCasse with SRG Financial Advisors, and we'll uh, also have another furry friend for you, courtesy of our veterinary at the lake out there at Ozark Cat and K9. I want to send a shout out to everybody at Key Radio, the Lake's new community radio station, 89.3, keyradio.live. Check us out all over the place, and thanks for watching What's Permanent.